my friend we're back rising star beautiful david how are you man hey good time hey welcome to um welcome to chicago i don't know how often do you get to chicago first time first wow. time yep oh cool okay well sorry we're running a couple minutes late we always try to get everything done early and then we're running a yeah. couple minutes late because tony can't shut up <laughs> yeah it's amazing um but uh, thanks so much for coming out. I know you got here late last night, and uh, we're excited to have you. Yeah, no, I'm excited to be here. Appreciate the opportunity. That's great. Um, can we get a little uh, a card on uh, on David? Beautiful. So we'll give the, we'll give our viewers a little background. Grew sure. up and live in Northern Virginia. Right. Master's degree in electrical engineering from Princeton. Undergrad, you went to UVA. That's right. Um, because UVA has usually has a better basketball team than Princeton. <laughs> you know, Princeton's not bad for you know uh, Ivy League. Sure. Um, started watching July of 2017, so that's that's like two years. Yep, a little over two years. A little over two years. Trades only short puts, and and we're not going to say only, but and primarily. I, yeah, yeah, primarily, and I don't want to say ever exclusively, but <laughs> SPX Rut IWM and hobbies include rock climbing and collecting museum, collecting custom playing cards. Custom playing cards, yeah. It's just like playing cards you play poker with, um, but some artists, they, they kind of customize the boxes, the faces, and the art. It's sort of like artwork, and it's just something that I had a hobby for a while. Is this what this is? This is cool. This is an example of one of them, but it, it, everything's different. It's kind of just like artwork, pretty much, and yeah. a lot of different stuff. It's, it's neat. Yeah. Anton, who works here, does a lot nice. of stuff, loves them, too. Nice. So there's, there's so many things that jump out at me. I'm just going to go all over the place with you. Of course, sure. The... Your background, from what I understand from reading your bio, was that you started kind of um, getting interested in markets. Um, do you mind saying your age? Um, 34. 34, okay, good. Um, so you started getting involved in after you graduated, uh, after you got your master's. It was in Princeton that I oh, got in interested. Princeton. Yes. Okay. And, and in that time, it's about 2008, 2009, right? Right, right, around that time. Right. So you got in kind of at, after the meltdown. Yes, fortunately. Right. Actually, I I was following the markets during the meltdown, but I wasn't trading heavily yet. So I had some small positions. But you, you were know, a student. I, yeah, and but I remember like the thousand point down yeah. on the Dow <laughs> and then thousand point up. I mean, I remember all that. But if you were involved in any capacity. But I wasn't involved right. uh, yeah, in the small capacity. So, so you're you're a student. You're an electrical engineering student. Yes. And you're obviously in, in the master's program, the engineering. Were you a full-time student? Yes, at that time. Okay. Correct. So there, there's it's a crazy amount of tasty traders are engineers, like a ridiculous yeah, percentage. I've heard. I, I can't even, like, it would be, it'd blow your mind if we, we got into that. But <laughs> okay. it's a crazy percentage. And, and I know it's math-related and everything else. But at the time, in 2008, 2009, you'd never heard of us, and we hadn't even right. started Taste right. the Trade until 2011 anyway. Um, so you start out in the business, and you, and you start out you know, trading and looking at stuff. Were there a lot of other kids that were your age or that were in school with you that were doing something similar? No, there was only one, and it was one of my buddies there. He's the one that got me into option trading because I told him I was trying to trade like oh I'm buying some stocks and I was trying to get into it he said have you thought about options and then he told me about basically put selling you know the idea of premium and then rolling so that's where I kind of got the early start and it was really appealing at the time of, oh you know I can put a position on I collect this credit and then market moves against me okay roll it and you know obviously we're at the bottom so it was easier about somebody was higher and lose, stocks were cheap. Right? And, yeah. and you just roll and roll and roll and it's just like printing money. So, I mean, that's how I got started. Yeah. That's so funny. And, and I mean, that's great. That's great because that's great. Why didn't anybody else, like, why were it just the two of you guys? Um, the rest of the people didn't like money? I don't know because he, I don't know how he got started, but when he got me into it, I was just so focused on doing it myself. And I would talk to people or I mentioned to friends or ultimately when I started working, you know, my, my coworkers. And, they knew what I was doing, but I guess maybe it was too complicated or something, and or maybe just didn't have the interest there, or it was too abstract. So, in the field of electrical engineering, what do you actually do? Um, I 
don't really talk about my career. That's that's kind of okay. more private. So okay, so, that's fine. Yeah, I'm just curious because I don't really, you know, I don't know a lot about that. But that's fine. So, but you are in that space. Right yes, now. yes, I yeah. am. Okay, so throughout time, you're 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 going along. You're trading. You're you know using a put selling strategy. You're trading some stocks, whatever it is. Right. It goes over you know almost almost a eight year period. Right. And in all of a sudden in 2017, you know a light bulb goes on. How'd you find Tasty Trade? So. Um, somewhere in between about two, three years before that, <clears throat> I actually pulled out of the markets a bit because I took some money to go buy a house and I just never got back in yet. Sure. And I had a friend who was, uh, he had his money with, um, um, I don't know which firm it was, but they were kind of managing his money and he wasn't happy with the returns. And he knew I was trading options, but he never really got into it. And he started looking around and somehow found but the funny thing was he didn't really have the in-depth knowledge. Like he saw your content and you know, like people who find you first, like it's like a fire hose, right? You see all yeah. these segments and, right. and he didn't really understand it, but he knew there was something there and he knew I was involved. So he started emailing me and ping me like my head, like, hey David, look at this, look at this. And at the time I was not really that participating that much. And, and I was like, I blew him off for a bit. But finally, he was like, look, can you watch this segment? And I remember it was a calling Tom and Tony, and somebody was talking about, like, you know, hey, what if I hold my positions to expiration and squeeze out that last bit of juice? And of course, you're like, you know, it's not worth it because of the risk. Mm -hmm. And then we do 21 DTE, and it, it was intriguing. And, and I knew enough to get the terms, but not know why. So that kind of sparked it. And I mean, this, it's always the same. Once you find it, you don't go back. You know, no, the, no. Once, it's, once, it's, you, once you're bitten by the bug, yeah. That absolutely. was July of 2017. That that's one. That's that's July of 2017. So uh, you started out, and um, and then you were kind of like a junkie for a while. I mean, as far all, as all sucking in. up the information. All in, yes. Yeah, all in. Yeah. Did your wife think you were crazy at the time, or or no? Um, Probably a little bit. A little bit. Because um, at the time, like You're watching too many shows on the internet. Not just too many shows, but you know, what, what trade small trade often like you can really get into it like really small, really often, and adjusting deltas. I oh, was sure. into yeah, you all can of over, that. You can you can you go know? crazy. And, and yeah. the funny thing is, like I don't know if it was I called in or something, but you had talked about. Uh, back when you're on the floor or something like you would you guys would flatten out like every afternoon that was your yeah. job to flatten out yeah. and it did the same thing I would do my trades and I would try to flatten out or get to some number and you know 4 p.m. 3 30 and it, it was crazy and like I definitely over adjusted because I was adjusting my I was trying to neutralize like every hour you know market move yeah, I that's was trying too much. To, right, you know, right 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 and I had an email this morning from somebody. He said, well, because the rates, because the commissions have dropped so low on stock now, you know, they're, they're zero. So he's like, can I just use, because he had a fairly large account, he's like, can I just use stock now? Delta and hedge, just right? And Delta hedge, because right. he, the reason you couldn't do it before was because the markets were right. too, you know, the commissions were too high. And now that there's no commissions, I mean, can't you do that? And I'm like, well, you can do a lot better today. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> right. you know, with, with, with zero to adjust, I mean, yeah, I, right. I still don't think it's, probably the most prudent way to trade, but you can do it a sure. lot more so today. So so take us through your, um, uh, before we get to 2019, because right. I want to focus on 2019, but from the summer of 2017, when you first started watching us to kind of, you know, sucking up all the content that we have and watching everything and you were emailing back and forth with right, me and you right. were, um, you might have called into the show and everything many else. Many times, yeah. Many times, okay. Um, so take us through that the next year and a half of like from the end of, from the middle of 2017 to the beginning of 2019. Like give me some of the ups and downs and give me some of the, you know, what, what worked and what didn't work. Okay, so 2017 when I first started, I mean, the whole idea of, you know, delta neutral, carry short deltas. I mean, I, I, I was trying to adopt all of that, uh, mostly like strangles or iron condors. But 2017 obviously was very challenging to the upside. So I was not really making a lot of money and um, it was getting frustrating. It was, it was a grind. Trail. It was a grind. Was a grind. Yeah. And, and I actually sort of capitulated and just started going long delta for the most part around November. I just kind of, I was like, all right, let me just, just follow the market. You know, people say trade the trend or whatever. And started of course making money because it was still going up st through early 2018 january still going up peaked at 2018 yeah big not huge but because uh, i wasn't trading huge like leverage wise at the time so i had to draw down but i was able to kind of roll those positions because we went down 10 percent vix hit 50 and then we bounced and yeah are you talking about early, early you're talking about the beginning of 2018 February. you're talking about the meltdown from the middle of from the end of january to the middle of february 
Yes, yes. Yeah. February 5th or 8th February that 5th. weekend. Yeah. VIX hit 50 that one Monday. Yeah. And I made it through that. There was a big drawdown, but then it bounced back. Um, so, but I sort of changed my tune a bit. I was like, okay, let me do a little lower delta. Maybe don't leverage as much because that was like I got like. What were you trading? What kind of products then? Um, everything. Everything. Um, everything liquid. You know, Apple, Facebook, but everything on the. You know, you gotta taste. Yeah. Uh, we had a the watch one list. That, the watch yeah. list of the most liquid yeah. ones or the products. Um, and yeah, it's like spotting opportunities, high IVR, put on a trade, put on a trade. You know, everything you guys teach basically. Yeah. So you were just, you were just, you were all in and figuring it all out. It was figuring it all out, definitely. At, at what point did you realize, okay, I, I get this, and like I own responsibility for my successes and my failures. So. I stopped trading so many products because I was getting too much to manage because I wanted to not have to watch the screen all the time. Because you're working full-time the whole time. Yes. Yeah. So I simplified my strategies. I went to primarily short puts, but I also started carefully logging my trades. And the main thing about that was um, when you log your trades, you can really go back in and see what works and what doesn't. And you know, I'll put on the same strategy have probability trade, but obviously they don't all win, they don't all lose. But then being able to have you know 50 occurrences, 100 occurrences, and looking at the win rate and seeing the math work out, I calculated average winner, max win, max loss, and seeing the expectancy. Once I could get all that and really internalize and just trust the numbers, because you know you guys teach the probabilities, right? But until you do it, you can't internalize that. You're just kind of listening to someone else. Right, um, sure. But once you, okay, and you know the math works, then you can just follow the strategy. And just your strongest, do you think your strong, one of your strong suits in all this was just, I mean, obviously, for, I think from what you told me, math is, math is very Not a strong. weakness, clearly. Yeah. Not, Not a weakness, much, yeah. right, right. So, so the math totally made sense. Yes, okay. yes. And so th th at some point when the math makes sense, my argument is that, I, I like to use the argument, I shouldn't say my argument, my, I like to use the argument that your decision-making capabilities, you know, um, quickly move up quickly, kind of as as far as um, your ability to process what is what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong, yes. and you're able to make those adjustments, and you're and you're also able to assume responsibility for you know Definitely. all the outcomes. Right. Okay. Right. And then that happened through 2018. You think? Um, it was during 2018. Yeah, that year, like. As I got a little simple, when I simplified the strategies, I was able to track them better because yeah. when I have all these positions, I'm rolling and one wins, one doesn't. And then you got run over though by December, late November, December in 2018. Yeah, yeah. that was tough. It was tough. Yeah, yeah. it was tough. Um, but it also learned a lot because you know you kind of know your emotions, like what you'll feel, because you, until you, you know, making money is easy, but it's how you handle losing that yeah. you learn. Not only about yourself, but about <laughs> how to trade. So, how, you know? so, if your strategy was mostly like short puts and things like that, was it that way in December of last year, a year ago? Yes. Because the down move started about a year ago, right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It started around it started around Thanksgiving, 2018. Right, right. And that was a violent down move. It was right, violent. Right, right into like right after Christmas. Right. Yeah. And so, so, but. But you you came out of it okay. You yes. just you learned a lot. I learned a lot. What did you learn? I learned that you really have to manage risk even more closely because I wasn't using stops at all or like not in, in terms of like not managing like I would just mental adjustments. Me mental adjustments, but yeah. it wasn't as rigorous before. And I learned about just like really even going smaller. Like you could, you can, you can never get hurt. like you always said you can't get hurt by yeah. going smaller. Yeah. You know, so just really minding the risk and learning to like take it in stride and make that adjustment. So before we get to 2019, by the end of 2018, the end of last year, do you think that what you had learned trading had changed the way you do business in your in your uh, in your livelihood, your electrical engineering, you know, um, background and and your work stuff out, outside of it's your full time job. Did it change the way you performed other tasks? Were you better at everything else because of the way you had to defend and adjust trading and all that kind of stuff? I'm just curious what impact it had on other parts of your life. 
uh, the answer is yes, but that sort of aspect that, you know, that's been going on the whole time. Just because you, yeah, sure, like you always sure. say, like, trading is about, uh, trading as you guys teach is like about how to make decisions yeah. and the concept of pot odds and always looking at the upside and the downside. Yeah, sure, so if sure. you can figure out that, you know, if you can quantify the risk, you know, how much I can make or how much I can lose, it makes that decision a lot easier. Yeah. You know, so, and, and, and that translates to uh, everything in life is, I always say trading is life. Life is trading, right? So everything's pot eyes. There's always risk reward, always a trade off, always a decision to make. So, no. Do you wish you'd started when you were like 12? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Of course. So, let's talk about the reason you're on as a rising star. So, as you built up equity and everything else in 2019, year to date, you've been working full time and trading. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it definitely has not, it, it has not been a really good two sided year. You know, it's been pretty much a, grind to the upside, contracting volatility. Not, there hasn't been any volatility pops in all of 2019. Have you done for 2019? Uh, as of the close yesterday, just under 20%. Just under 20%. Right. That's great. I mean, you've only been doing this a couple of years, you know, at, at this pace. Right. But do you feel like now, like what you're able to accomplish now, do you feel like that is something that you can, um, and that's on that's on a fairly significant amount of money. I mean, right. do you mind me saying it's on, you know, way over a quarter million dollars? Right? Yes. Okay. And because um, I don't want to give out everything, sure. but um, and you've been able to do that. Do you think you've reached the point where now, like, you can you can create some kind of scalability with that, and 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 also repeatability? Oh, I like to say abso- absolutely. Yeah. The, the way I trade now is all about scalability and repeatability because you know I have maybe two or three kind of bread and butter strategies, but each of them is based on a trade. You know, like a short put. You know, one of them I do, I, I do a five delta short put, right? And I, I do use a stop, but then you know if I get stopped, I'll reestablish, which is basically like rolling in a sense. Yeah. Um, but. You know, I've studied the numbers, I've done back tests, I've made my own back test, but after the back testing, I've live traded it. But again, once you go through and you see the trade log and you see that win rate, you know, over time start to converge on what the theory should be, that's the most satisfying part because you know, like, like trusting the numbers. Especially for a numbers guy like yourself. Yes, yes. I, mean, I just you know. had this discussion this morning on the show. I know you were talking to those guys out there, but I just had this discussion on the show. I just did a show in LA on futures on futures and futures options. And I, sh- I all year I did not look at my futures options positions, mm-hmm. but I just put together a piece for my LA show and I showed my results and they came out almost, we kept almost exactly 25% of the premium that we sold in for all these futures options, like right. 10 or 15 different underlines over the course of 2019, trading small, just keeping it all delta neutral, not doing anything other than just letting it, you know, run its course. And the numbers played out with it on the number, right, like right. almost on the number. And you're right, it feels freaking great when that happens yeah. because you're like, okay, well, this thing, you know, it did what it was supposed to do. Right. And then one thing that's interesting, before I really committed to what I'm doing. I back tested it. So I had a trade, I built a back test of this in, uh, put strategy on SPX. It had about 400 occurrences and I, I customized it where I can change the delta 5, 10, 20, 30 and all the numbers would change. And my friend was like, hey, let's look at the win rate. Cause I, I set it where you can have no stop or one X, two X, three X, kind of like you guys do. Yeah, sure. But let, let's take out the stop loss and look at the win rate. And you know, five delta, guess what? 97, 98%, you know, 10 delta, 95%. I mean. And it wasn't like I made the back test. That was Karen, the super trader approach too. And, and, you know? and I wasn't trying to make the back test to meet those numbers. No, I know. It just happened. Yeah. And it was almost scary, like, like wow, like it just, you know, everything, you know, it, you take these trades and you take the back test and it, 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 it does follow the math. So that's when you can really like internalize Do you think that. if there's another situation like what we saw in December or um, January, February of 2018 or December of 2018, 18 or going back, you know, like, let's just call it like a situation like 2000. I don't think you're gonna see another 2008, 2009, but you sure. could easily see, we've been in the midst of a 10 year bull market. You could easily yeah. see a pullback, you know, um, you could easily see a nasty pullback here of let's say five or 10%. Do you think you're you're gonna be okay in that move? Yes, because I, I do care short Delta now. Uh, oh, I might do? have a hedge position, Okay, good. which, which is a, dr- I mean, I'd be, higher by some percent if I didn't have this you know, oh, kind so of hedge. Oh, so your hedge position. is your drag? Yes, I definitely have a hedge. And, That's great. Um, 
that's at least another four or five percent of drag. But you know what? It's yeah. part of the game, right? And and I got I want to be ready. And and I almost think of it like that four or five percent. Obviously, if I do that for ten years, that's fifty percent. You know, it compounds. The, but yeah. if the crash happens and it pays off. That may all pay back, you know, and it's just taking the the profit and just shifting it. And it's peace of mind. You're peace of mind, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so th that's actually you were asking about what I learned from last year. Like, yeah, I had something like that, but it wasn't quite enough. Now I'm really like that's that's actually where I spend most of the time, just kind of minding minding that down. Do you realize you are far more sophisticated in the world of trading than 99.9% .9 of all hedge fund managers. You do you know that. I mean, because you're not a sales. 7.9% of everybody at Princeton, obviously. You're not a salesman. You're, you're, you're just a trader. I mean, does it feel, it must feel good. It does. And, but that's the same message you've been trying to, no, I, know. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, if people follow you guys and really take this in, like, you know, this is complex stuff. But then, you know, once you really learn it, it doesn't matter. You think happen. you're a junkie? Yeah, trading yeah, junkie. No, yeah. of course. Yeah. I, I hate the trading holidays, you know? Agreed, agreed. <laughs> Do you ever see yourself not doing this? For now, no, no. For now, I, I like it. I love it. Yeah. It's, uh, I, you know, I get withdrawal on, on like, the, Do your kids things. say, hey, Dad, uh, what's with the ding? <laughs> no, no, they're, they're, they're too young right now. To really oh, they're too young. Okay. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it. But I'll, I'll tell him, like, hey, it was a green day. It was a red day. So he knows that every day is a green day or a red day. That, that's the extent of, you know, it's That's okay. Day. That's not bad. That's not Good bad. Start. When they can start quoting futures, that, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, David, uh, thank you. I mean, I know 20 minutes goes by so yeah. quick here. Um, and I know it's it's so difficult, you know, to come out here and, and to disrupt your week. It. But yeah. it is so awesome that you came out and you told your story. There are 100,000. And I know you have like a little community of people that you talk to and things like yeah, that. Yeah, this pretty active Facebook like, yeah, online forum. It's great. Groups, yeah. um, and thank you so much for coming out here and, you know, kicking the tires and checking out the studio. And yeah, no, it was a lot breaking of fun. Bed with, breaking bread with everybody here. And uh, um, your story is it's it's just awesome and i think you know in a couple of years you're going to be you know you're a rising star now but hopefully you know you're a, a shooting star whatever it is yeah, whatever we'll the next level hopefully. is hopefully yeah it's awesome thanks so much yeah awesome, and man. thank you guys appreciate, appreciate your time we're gonna take a quick 90 second break we're gonna come back david you can say this with me if you want to we're gonna bring in the real talent of taste it's christy ross next